For a while now, we've been hearing rumors about Apple working on a larger MacBook Air model, but there's a lot that doesn't make sense about what we've been hearing. So let's talk design, performance, price, and most importantly, when we can buy one. Want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. And you guys have been asking about this too. I'm personally a huge fan of the MacBook Air. My first ever Mac was the tiny 11 inch 2011 MacBook Air, and that thing was amazing. So thin, and even towards the end of its eight year or so useful life, it felt far snappier than any Windows laptop I've ever used in daily tasks, even up till today. Today I use the M2 MacBook Air, the redesign was too much for me to resist and the midnight colour is absolutely awesome. I even did a whole video about why everyone was worried about the finish and you can check it out uh, by having a look up there, but suffice it to say I've been using it since the release day and it still looks 100% mint. So is the 15 inch Air really happening? First and foremost, how certain are we that the bigger MacBook Air is even coming? Well, there's been a lot of confirmation that the 15 and a half inch displays are going into production in the first quarter of next year from Ross Young, and his record on Apple displays so far has been 100%. He's literally never been wrong. Really, the only question mark would be what is the name of this machine? There's a chance that it could have a new name or simply be MacBook, and there have even been suggestions of it being called a MacBook Studio. Now, I'm not convinced. I think it's uh, entirely likely to be MacBook Air, and Apple has offered 11.6 and 13.3 inch options in the past. Uh, on previous models, so it's certainly not impossible. Also, if it was going to be called a uh, MacBook Studio, that would surely be above the MacBook Pros, uh, just like the Mac Studio is. Now, Ross only sees the panels as his specialty is the display market, so what makes this look like it's for a MacBook Air? Well, Apple's panels have the distinctive rounded corners and presumably a notch in there, so that's a decent indicator to begin with. Now also the iPad displays have a different aspect ratio to MacBooks, basically ruling out a larger iPad which we've been hearing about and that was typically going to be between 14 and 16 inches, so kind of understandable that it might have been confused with that. But these panels are also not mini LED or ProMotion, so they're unlikely to be destined for Pro iPads or MacBooks. Both Guo Chi and Mark Gurman have both mentioned the device as well, so it seems very likely that it is actually on the way. That said, they've also both agreed in the past with John Prosser about the Apple Watch Series 7, which was going to have flat sides, so no one's infallible. Except, of course, Ross Young. Now, I would expect this to look very much like the 13.6 inch M2 model, just with a little bit more space either side of the keyboards and deep. I would also say, though, that those spaces either side of the keyboard will probably not have the speaker grills we're used to, as with the MacBook Air in its smaller form, at least at the moment the speakers bounce off the display at the back where you would expect a fan to be, but we ain't getting a fan in it. What chips will be inside the 15 inch MacBook Air and when? Now there have been mixed reports about the chips that would power the larger MacBook Air, but I think it's pretty clear that whatever goes in it will match the smaller MacBook Air. Just like with the MacBook Pros, you can only get them with the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips right now, and all the configurations that you can go up to are the same. That for the MacBook Air means base M series chips, and my guess is that they will start with Apple's 2023 M3 chip. Now, some have suggested that they could come with M2 and M2 Pro options, but here's why that makes absolutely no sense to me. I've said from the beginning that I think Apple's plan is that all Apple Silicon Macs will end up getting annual updates on the chip side, just like the iPad, the iPhone, and the rest. The cores are being updated every year for Apple's iPhone's uh, A chips, and it makes very little sense not to keep those Macs up to date too, even if the updates are generally simple chip bumps, as opposed to the iPhone, which will get new look, new camera modules, all that kind of stuff a little bit more often. Now, if these display panels are to be produced in the first quarter of 2023, I guess they're not gonna ship in a device to consumers until at least Q4, and the end of that quarter would be June's WWDC. WWDC being the time that Apple introduced the M2 in 2022. So, for me, I'm expecting the M3 MacBook Airs to be arriving around then in both 13.6 and 15.5 inch sizes. Now, I know there have been various rumours that the 15.5 inch could be out in early 2023, as soon as March, but that would almost guarantee M2, which would then be potentially superseded 
by the M3 very quickly, either upsetting the M2 Big Air owners because it was only the latest chip for a few months, or not releasing at the same site, or not releasing at the same time as the M3 in the larger Air. Uh, but it is arriving in the smaller one which makes even less sense now just hold the whole thing off until June launch both together with M3 inside and call it a day also you're not gonna have that many displays ready if you're not starting them until the beginning of next year what's it gonna cost and where does it sit in the lineup now I actually think it's reasonably easy to work out the pricing on the 15 inch MacBook Air because we have the MacBook Pros that are basically identical beyond the display size and the battery capacity already and perhaps a little bit of cooling and although the starting prices for those MacBook Pros in 14 and 16 inch sizes are $500 apart that's because the entry level Pro gets a bin chip with eight cores instead of ten so for the same spec the gap is two hundred dollars which I'd expect to be about the same with the MacBook Air so while we have a starting price of eleven ninety nine on the Air with an eight core GPU I can see the 15 inch getting an unbin chip for an extra hundred and uh, the larger display for two hundred giving a starting price of fourteen ninety nine for the big Air and that seems pretty reasonable to me. My guess is that it will start with 256 gigs of storage, non-binned M3, 8 gigs of unified memory and the same I.O. as the 13.6 inch 2, two uh, USB-C ports, a headphone jack and a MagSafe for exclusive charging. Of course that bigger form factor will also offer better battery life which right now is the only party trick that the long in the tooth looking 13 inch MacBook Pro has up its sleeve. So I do think it's very likely that that will replace this model within the range as well. And that of course will be the end of the Marmite love it or hate it touch bar that is now only on that 13 inch MacBook I hesitate to say pro. So an M3 powered 15.5 inch Retina LCD, thin, fanless MacBook Air with a category beating battery life, touch ID, more performance than 90% or more of people will ever need, and the best part of a decade of OS support on macOS for around $1,500 starting price, which sounds pretty compelling to me. For anyone who needs more display space because they might have visual impairments or needs a mobile capable computer that lasts probably at least a couple of work days this will be a very compelling option this will also make a great uh, desktop computer if you dock it to a display but then you can take it on the go with you too now I don't think it makes sense to rush it out with an M2 and replace it quickly but who knows Apple works in mysterious ways so thank you so much for watching and thanks to my patreons for their support subscribe and ring the bell for more and if you have a question use hashtag I gave answers down in the comments and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell.